Uh, congratulations also to all the winners. Uh, we now move to the presentation of the President's Award, uh, the honor we bestow for a journalist's life contribution to global reporting. It goes to Tom Brokaw. Where is Tom? There he is. Um, the, the, uh, yeah, Let me say a few words about Tom before I introduce him. Uh, he was the anchor and managing editor uh, who kept NBC News at the top of the ratings for most of his 21 years at that desk. Uh, he left the anchor job in 2004, uh, but we've seen a lot of him since. Uh, Tom has not only been a frequent correspondent for various documentaries and election nights, uh, he's also been more international than ever, traveling to Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, in other countries, reporting on war, terrorism, and the evolution of American diplomacy. In the past decade, the South Dakota native has remained the man the New York Times' Bill Carter saluted when he left his anchor job in 2004. Carter described him as, quote, the reassuring, unflappable, flat-accented, baritone voice of reason <laughs> and solid American values. Let me, let me read now from the certificate that we are presenting to Tom. In recognition of his enormous contribution over more than four decades to coverage of international conflict as an anchor for NBC News and as an NBC special correspondent since then, in light of his courageous reporting from dangerous theaters of war in Africa and the Middle East, in acknowledgement of his rich addition to the literature of World War II through his Greatest Generation books, we present the Overseas Press Club President's Award to Tom Brokaw. Thank you. Thank, you. Uh, thank you all very much. If there's an oxymoron in American life, it is humble anchorman. Uh, <laughs> we simply don't exist, but it is truly a humbling experience to be here tonight among all of these award winners and to get the kind of ovation that you afforded me. But let me also just remind you that as I was walking up here, there are some young NBC staffers as well. I looked over the shoulder of one of them and he was tweeting, Brokaw receives Overseas Press Club of President's Award, hashtag old dude. <laughs> um, I will be brief because I want to get all of you home in time to watch way too early on MSNBC, which will be starting in about 20 minutes, actually. <laughs> These are evenings of renewal for our profession. And as I sat here tonight and watched all of these extraordinary award winners cross the stage, I was so struck by the sense of nobility, honor, courage, and importance that they represent. I was also struck by something else, about how we've expanded our universe of journalism. The individual practitioners who come now to this stage from all over the world, men and women representing all the ethnic groups in America and around the world for that matter, in a way that they wouldn't have just 20 years ago at an overseas press club award. Moreover, at a time when a lot of people are wringing their hands about journalism, this is an evening in which we can all take pride in the exceptional, important work that is being done. We were reminded again last week in Boston that it is now a world without borders. It is still the Overseas Press Club Award, but where it is overseas these days, it is everywhere around us because the universe has been so exceptionally expanded, first by the technology of the internet, the digital world in which we now all operate. And we are caught up in wars that are stateless in the Middle East, wars without borders. Moreover, we are also dealing with other kinds of profound changes, profound changes in the economic makeup of this globe, 
After all, we are living on a smaller planet with many more people. And the challenges that are out there for us as organizations, as individuals, is to commit ourselves to the compact that we should always have with our readers, with our viewers, with the people who get the information that we provide to them over the internet. As I travel this country and the world, I find an enormous appetite for people who want to know what it means, not just what happened, about what is likely to happen next, to give them, if you will, a road map so that we can find our way through this new 21st century together. Finally, I would just like to recommend to you the testimonial that was written in the program here tonight by my longtime friend and colleague, Martin Fletcher, who we have traveled the world together. It is a very generous tribute to me, but it is typically cheeky by Martin as well. <laughs> he mentions several of my nicknames, beginning with, as a correspondent, as he would, referring to an anchor, as Bigfoot, as they describe <laughs> me when I would show up somewhere. And then Martin, who almost never gets things wrong, described my nickname around the office and on location as Duncan the Wonder Dog, as he put it. <laughs> when in fact the nickname, as I always heard it, was Duncan the Wonder Horse. <laughs> but then it occurred to me, it's what happens when you get to my age, you go from being a horse, carrying the team around the world, to being a dog curled up at the feet of the correspondents. <laughs> and so that's where I am. And I want to, as I conclude, pay tribute to all the people at NBC, many of whom are here tonight, who made it possible for me to do the work that I did. People that you don't know, who didn't appear in front of the camera, whose names weren't even always on the credits. When I left Nightly News, I said, that's it. No more pup tents, no more midnight flights to distant places. And within a month, I was in Pakistan, Kashmir, covering the earthquake with my friend Justin Balding back here. <laughs> waking, waking up in a cargo container at five o'clock in the morning, trying to find some instant coffee. And I thought to myself as I watched dawn break over the Hindu Kush, I wouldn't be anywhere else in the world. And I was thrilled to be a part of this great profession. And I find that as long as I'm vertical and still breathing, I want to be a part of it. My final anecdote that I want to leave with you tonight is that as much as those people have been my brothers and sisters throughout my career, they've always kept me in a certain perspective. I was reminded last week when I saw one of my old colleagues in the Midwest. I had interviewed Mikhail Gorbachev, the first American to ever interview a general secretary of the Communist Party. So I had a certain standing in the communist world and I went to Poland at the time when the Pope was going to Poland to, we later learned, to try to mediate the differences between Moscow and Warsaw and especially solidarity. And I had a, an interview arranged with Gen General Jaruzelski, who was teetering trying to keep Poland from being invaded by the Russians, but at the same time he was faithful to his party. It was a big get for me to get General Jaruzelski, and those of you who remember him, he was a very correct Polish military man, shaded glasses, very erect in his stature. And I went to the presidential palace accompanied by my friend, uh, Teddy Elbert, who was kind of an unmade bed of a man, a large <laughs> Chicago guy, sport coat stained with beer and food, <laughs> collar is open, wandering in, looking around the presidential palace. General Jaruzelski comes in and stands with his aides in a very formal way, begins to say to me through his interpreter, Mr. Brokaw, I have been interviewed by Walter Cronkite, translation. I've been interviewed by Barbara Walters, translation. And then he said, and now I'm about to be interviewed by the most important American journalist of them all, Tom Brokaw. And as I began to inflate, and before I could respond, I heard my producer behind me, Ted Elbert, say in a loud stage whisper, oh my God, no wonder this guy is in so much trouble. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you.
Uh, you'll, you'll find Martin Fletcher's uh, cheeky little story about Tom in your Dateline magazine. Um, that uh, ends our evening. Uh, thank you so much for coming, and uh, we hope to see you next year. She turned me off. No. Those of you who are here who receive citations, your certificates are up front here. You can come and pick them up. <laughs>